Good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome to Natik in Elk Grove, California, and NatikYarns.com coming to you live on Tuesday. Probably the only day of the week that I will actually know <laughs> what day it is. I was going to say, it really is Tuesday. We both got it right. It threw me off this morning when Danielle texted and said that she was on a flight back because I'm like, guys, flight wasn't till Wednesday. Did I miss a day of work? Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a moment of panic this morning of, oh my gosh. What day is it? I missed a whole day. How nobody like contacted me, like going, what's going on? I don't know what happened. I thought for sure, you know, something really crazy happened, but nope. no, her flight is just not on Wednesday. It's on Tuesday. It's okay. I thought yesterday was a different day than it was. And my child said, no, it's, you know, yesterday. I don't want to say the day because then we'll mess ourselves up. It, it was very slow, oh, but we as we are, okay. we are giving viewers. I found it because it, a little notification popped up saying so and so oh. liked your video, and I was like, <laughs> click, click on that. <laughs> so now I have it. I don't know. Facebook, it's weird. We're used to that. Um, I'm just kind of used to technology in general as a interesting cooperative beast. Um. I did finally figure out how not to have Siri on the watch pay attention to me. Oh, awesome. It's called raise to listen. So when you bring your arm up and start talking, she thinks you're talking to her. So if you bring your arm up and start talking, you have to hit the side button really fast and then she goes away. <laughs> so settings in your phone or There's is it on the watch a setting to actually turn off raise to listen but i don't know that i'd want to do that because sometimes it's handy to actually just lift your arm up and start talking and the watch searches things for you but that's where the i'm sorry i didn't get that comes <laughs> from all the time because you know she's also mildly snarky in her tone i'm like how did they, why did they program the ai with a tone because it's funny. Our A unit at home, sometimes she's like, sure. And other times she's like, okay, here's, you know, X, Y, Z. And we're like, oh, she's got an attitude today. Yes, my friend's um, one of those is sappy. And she'll tell it stop, like when it's playing music. And sometimes it stops right away. Sometimes it keeps going. And this last oh, no. time it like slowly turned down and then off. Wow. Like, what? Why is the AI sassy? I don't know. Like, is it just a lag or is it actually like they programmed it to randomly be like, I have a delay to mess with you. They have to have programmed it because ours really does change her responses. Yeah, I mean, I know they programmed um, a certain brand of car to have some snarky things yes. that it does. <laughs> they did. But, you know. Anyone else have crazy AI at home? or yeah. with you at all times <laughs> whether it's siri alexa or google assistant bixby i don't know i don't use it i think they just say hey google yeah so I think my watch bixby. tries to do bixby sometimes like no i don't have you turned on i don't I've want you never even heard of bixby Is yeah that the Samsung it's, a, one? it's an android thing huh. i don't know whatever my phone is good morning everyone good morning good morning yeah yes. so technology it's amazing until it's not yeah and then you kind of wonder why we didn't just stick with pen and paper <laughs> sometimes <laughs> there are days that i'm like this technology thing was a bad idea yesterday everything bluetooth didn't want to work right like i kept having to turn the bluetooth off and back on on my ipad to get it to work wow i was facetiming with a couple of friends and like she had her airpods in and her she kept cutting in and out and I'm like I can't hear you again I can't hear you again I'm like can you just unhook the stupid airpods right Kathy sometimes she thinks we're talking to her and then she starts explaining something and we're like cancel yeah like no no nobody's talking to nope. you go back to sleep machine it's like the little kid that doesn't want to be left out you're like no uh -huh. oh, this is an adult conversation go back to your toys <laughs> shoo okay so, I don't have a new grand prize for you guys yet because Boss Lady has it. So, we're just going to skip that today until Friday when Boss Lady is back in the boutique 
and let her announce what she has brought back with her for this next grand prize. So we will move on to talking about today's daily prize. Which is a really fun worsted weight cotton paired with Danielle's pattern reflection, which is originally designed with a DK and a lace weight held double stranded. Um, so it gives you a worsted weight thickness out of your yarn combination. That's why a single strand of worsted cotton works well for this. Um, there are three sizes on the pattern. You have enough yarn here for either the small or the medium. It's a really fun little like columnar lace design. Nothing too fancy. Just enough interesting to have fun with. And how you get entered into the daily drawing is by interacting with our video. So if you react to the video with any of these lovelies down here, sometimes I'm funny, so we'll throw that in there. Then you get one entry per reaction. And then if you comment on the video, you'll get five entries per comment. There it is. I'm like, where is the comment box? Did they move it again? No, it's here, but oh, it had what? these little like suggested things and wow. I had to scroll down. So they moved it. So if you comment, then you get five entries per comment. Then if you share, well, that's weird. It's totally different. Stories is gone. Huh. Now I've just got friends and no stories. Okay, so I'll just share to the one today. But wherever you share, you come back to that day's video and comment shared to and where, and you'll get 11 entries per share. See, again, technology, sassy. It's uh, got some lag today. So today's winner is going to be drawn from Saturday's video interactions and your interactions today will go into tomorrow's drawing. So we will come over to our handy dandy comment picker and see who our lucky winner is. Chris Lapisto. It's like the world knew that is her color. This is her color. That's super exciting. So Chris, we know you're local. Next time you come in the boutique, let us know you have a prize and we will get it from the cabinet. And if you win and you're not local, next time you make a purchase, just let us know in the notes that you have a prize and we will include it in your package. I think my favorite one in here is the bunny. Let me see if I can find it. Where's the bunny? Uh, I thought I saw one in front, but I did not. Uh -oh, we're out of bunnies. Maybe, maybe we're out of bunnies. I don't know. Okay. Check, check. Ooh, we still have some cute little keychains. Ooh, this one's got the soccer ball on it. Oh my God, for a second, I thought she had a little um, propeller hat on, <laughs> the angle it was at. Oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah. That's so cute. And her excellent shoes with the little bow on them. Okie dokie. As soon as this comment posts, pin, there we go. All right. Okay. So now we can talk about the new spring yarn that came in, well, spring, summer, um, that is perfect for those who want a lightweight cotton that's still a fairly quick knit because this is a worsted weight yarn. This is Concept by Katia's Camboya. It is a 50 gram skein that is 93 yards of, I get, I'm going to say an Aran worsted weight because it is on the slightly thicker side, but the way they did the construction, it's like this thin chainette around a thicker cotton core. So you're getting a really nice texture. The yarn is super soft. Love the color in this one. It is soft. 100% cotton. Um, so this one's going to be good for everything from accessories to garments. Like 
washcloths, market bags, tank tops, all of the things. Um, this first colorway is color number 76. This is kind of a red orange. You've got kind of a cranberry pink red, a rose pink, and then a melon coral around that creamy white core. So you're getting that kind of marled color effect of where the colors are all equally blended together. Then I really like the way they did the colors on these because like this one is like next in line in the rainbow. This is color 74, but it's got the kind of pumpkin-y orange, a gold, and an olive green, and then a little bit of like a chocolate. You know, I never even noticed the chainette portion of it until you said that. Yeah, I'm like, this one seems like this would be another interesting one to see how they make it. Because it's got like that chainette tube, but it's around a solid cotton core. So it's like, yeah. how? How do they do that? Does one go inside the other one? We need a yarn manufacturing sleuth to find these videos for us. Well, I know Juan knows some things, but I mm. don't know if he's allowed to share said videos. Because yeah. things are trade secrets. Those Which pesky. I get it, but I promise not to share. <laughs> we but just want to know. I'm definitely not going to start my own yarn manufacturing business. Mm, I just no. want to know how it's made because it's fascinating. Like, how do you do that? I found so many fun projects for this yarn this morning that I'm like, I don't really have time to do the video because I need to go cast on. Right? I'm a little um, <laughs> afraid to see what you found because we're going to love them. What do we do? Go want to cast on like four or five things every video? Pretty much. So first up is this really cute Tulsa tank. Very simple the elongated ribbing at the bottom, stockinette, a little bit of decreased shaping so you get this nice flattering curved edge on the armhole. I think about the only thing I would do different is pick up and do a little, maybe like a couple garter ridges on the neckline so you don't get, that's as far as it'll zoom. But so you don't get this kind of flipped over edge right here. It's not the worst thing ever. I'm just a little bit picky. It's not too flippy like some we see, yeah. but that's a very cute tank. But nice. I like that it's a little bit lowered in the back so you're not getting that like straight across on the back. I think it gives a little bit more flattering fit when it's got the little bit of a curve there. And then of course a little bit lower in the front so that it's not high up on your neck. Especially in the summer when you need lightweight cotton tanks, you don't need high necked things. Mm, not really. The minimally socially acceptable amount of coverage is what you need in the summer, at least here. And this has sizes from 32 to 64 and only takes 450 to 900 yards. Nice. Nothing like a top with no sleeves. Right? It's so much faster and it uses so much less yarn. Okay, I really like this next tank top too. Oh, fun. Um, this one has this really cute side detail, a little twisted ribbing, and then these kind of look like little um, tiny bubbles. They might be one by one twists. It's hard to tell because their yarn was pretty textured, but it continues up along the edges on the front and on the back, like you can see it a little better here. So it's got the racer back. The only thing I would change on this one is I would definitely make the armholes about two inches shallower because you're gonna have, yeah. you have to have just the right undergarment situation as is. That's, a, you, that's a lot low. If you up the armhole by like two inches, that will make it not so wardrobe dangerous just gonna say. <laughs> a little dangerous yeah and this one goes from a 27 to a 59 
and only takes 327 to 812 yards. So again, not a lot of yarn required to make this super cute one. It also has, oh, this picture will show it better, like a I-cord edging on the bottom. Hmm. If that's not your jam, do a little garter stitch or like I would probably continue the twisted rib. Where's the side shot? There we go. Like I would probably just continue the twisted rib, but do it all the way around because I think that would give a more cohesive look. That'd be pretty. But you want something there because otherwise it'll be flippy. Flippy rolly. Flippy tippy. All right, one more, and then we'll Kathy. show more colors. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah, I knew you would like this yeah. one. Yeah. This is like a little crescent shawl turned cowl with these little eyelet increases. I like this where it's folded flat so you can see it's like a, it's like a pie. Yeah. It's got little wedges. And then the eyelet lace and then a pico border for your bind off. This person did it in two colors, like they did a contrast color for their bind off and it's really pretty. But this one is a whole like two to three skeins. Kathy, I think a lot of us would um, scare people. That is the <laughs> Shelton Cowl. Oh, by Katie and the Squid. I've done some of their stuff before. They have cute patterns. What, what kind of name is that? I think it, she called her kid the Squid. Oh, okay. I think that's how that came about, if I remember correctly. Tiny bubbles in Hawaii. Yeah. Are all in Hawaii, Eileen? Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, see, that's why I was like, let's suggest the armhole, because we would all scare a lot of people, potentially. I'm not careful enough with how I walk to wear a <laughs> garment with right? that much potential for failure. Wardrobe malfunction garment? <laughs> exactly. All right, color 75 it's pretty for greens. the green people. You've got kind of more of like an, a lime green, a citrus green. There's a taupe and a cream against that soft white cotton background. In person, it looks like it has a hint of pink. I think that's the taupe, like the this kind of Yeah, you can see it if I really zoom in. Sandy color right there. I think it does have the slightest pink leaning to it, like how clay has a little bit of a pink leaning, even though, you know, clay is technically brown. Unless you live mm. in California and then it's red. Yes. Clay. Or you live in my neighborhood where they use fill dirt and it's just mud. Yeah. Just thick. the Fill dirt's no fun. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Right? The ocean loving peeps are going to love this one. Color 70 is this beautiful aqua slate gray a very soft like citron yellow green and then a silver over that creamy white cotton core so you're getting that beautiful rich like it reminds me of like the sea foam on the water it's very tropical and cheerful hope the close-ups aren't held too long for you guys I start looking and I'm like wow I just have to look at all the texture and the color and I'm like wait a minute other people are here too <laughs> she's getting sucked in by the I arm. am because well, it's so beautiful okay remember I mentioned that this yarn would be great for market bags I found a couple fun ones to do this one has the little garter border at the top and for the um, handle but look how pretty the bottom is. Oh, that's fun. Like this is one that you start at the bottom here and increase out. And then once you've got a big enough stitch count to switch to circular needles, you start just doing a simple yarn over knit two together mesh pattern, which holds its own really well in a market bag. Look here, look, this one is full of yarn appropriately. Oh, nice. I like all these pictures that people have their market bags full of yarn. Like, I like we're not the... actually going to use it for the market. No. It's, it's yarn. for the yarn store. I like the button detail on that. Yeah, isn't that cute? And this is a very quick knit. It's a free pattern. That's the girlfriend market bag. 
and let's see I guess we have to actually look at the pattern to see how much yarn we need it doesn't say so since it's a free pattern let's just go take a peek two to three balls nice Okay, then one more. This one seems appropriate since Danielle was just in France. This is a crochet one. This is the French market bag. Very easy mesh lace done with just basically doing a taller stitch like a double or triple crochet and then chains in between to create that mesh grid. And then it's tapered in at the top with this little detail here. Gives it almost like a halter top kind of look That's to it. That's exactly what I was thinking. But it makes it hold really well to keep your stuff in. I like all the examples with different things. This reminds me of one of those ads for those bo monthly boxes. Oh, right. Like, here's what you get in your box. And this one would take six balls. All right, one more project. This oh, super cute. cute scarf in a mellow mood. Just this simple, like, all over, they're like little tiny diamonds of lace. But just enough detail, really kind of to keep you from getting bored. But lightweight enough to be a scarf that you can just wear for pretty. And this one as written would be three to four skeins. You could definitely like, they made it pretty wide. They made it eight inches wide for a summer scarf. I would maybe kick off like two repeats and make it a little narrower. For a winter scarf, that'd be pretty in Merino cloud. Oh yes. But and today we have pretty, pretty cotton. Everything is definitely pretty in Merino cloud. Let's see. I think Stacy liked the cowl I linked. Yep. Just a quick look at the content and yardage. We've had some new people join in. So it is a hundred percent cotton worsted weight, ninety-three yards per ball. This one's like the winter Ooh, palette, people. This so is so pretty. Seventy-one. It has navy blue, powder blue a soft black and like a creamy white against that natural background. So it's a very kind of wintry color palette. Definitely a good one for the blue people. <laughs> Some funny bubbles popping up. I think they like that one. I love all the little emojis little reactions as we go. All right, then there's one super colorful one. This is color 77. It is red, yellow, blue, and like a sage green. So you've got like your primary colors plus green, which makes it look like the whole rainbow. Like even though there's no orange or purple in there, it still gives that kind of rainbow effect of all of the pretty mixed colors. So if you can't decide what color is your favorite, this one covers that all one. the bases. Party and a ball. Right? I can see you doing this next project. This is the Miami Vice shawl. Oh yes, wow. I mean, is there enough yarn overs in there for you? Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> we're good. I'm guessing that one's a pie shawl. Sure looks like it. And this one, look, another free pattern. Uh, this one is six to nine balls, depending on which size you want to make. But very easy. Yeah, this is a very lacy half pie shaped shawl, perfect for the beginner or someone looking for a fast, fun knit. In worsted weight, you can easily knit it up in two days. Nice. All right, challenge accepted, right? We'll, we'll I have... See, we'll see this on Friday? No. Darn it. I, I have a store project to finish first. Oh, all right. Saturday then. <sighs> wow. 
<sighs> That's well, Karen. Thank you very did much. It in oh wow! Different shades, so you could do. If you really can't decide what your favorite color is, you could just get several of them and do each one till it runs out. That would be fun. We'll just add this to our library for when you succumb to my suggestions. Uh huh. Then this is the one I think I want to make the wooly cute scarf, and it's not just because the name is. That's, cheesy that is cute. cute. Uh, but it's it reminds me of the Sophie scarf, but it's got this little columnar detail up the middle of the garter stitch, which gives it this kind of natural ability to fold in the middle, which lets it drape really nicely. I even I'm not normally a tassel person, but I even like this little tassel on the tail end. Gives it that finished look, right? Like I it's, think I think with that skinny tip, it needs. Needs a little, it needs a a, little the tassel. Something. Yeah. It's so cute. And this one is going to be three balls, maybe four if you're if not a fan of yarn chicken. I'd get four. Know, she's only got nine yards difference between her two numbers there. I'd get four. Make your tassels first. Well, and if you get four and make your tassels, if you stop increasing before you run out of your second ball, you know you're plenty good to go to start decreasing and not run out of yarn. So play it safe. Get yeah. Four. Yeah, Anna wants to do this one. Wooly cute scarf. <laughs> Sophie grew up. <laughs> Sophie, Sophie got the a Sophie scarf. Extra style. Sophie got a makeover. Kathy said, dang work getting in the way. I know, right? No, it's even, even working in a yarn store gets in the way of your knitting. It's funny. I know so many people who think, oh, what a fun job. You just knit all day. Oh, you're so cute. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still a fun job, but I don't just knit all day. I No. If I'm knitting, it's usually because I'm fixing a boo-boo on somebody else's project. Which cracks me up. Sometimes I'll be doing that and someone comes in and they're like, oh, what are you working on? I'm like, fixing their scarf. Yeah. Like, it's not mine. Nope. Like, mine's in the back. We knit at lunch. That's it. Yeah, lunch breaks are for knitting. I suppose we eat too. For eating, but, but they're also for knitting. Yeah. All right. A couple more colors. If you need some neutrals, we have color 72 in black pewter and silver over that natural base so you're getting that really pretty neutral gray palette or if you prefer neutral but warm colors we have color 73 that has like a coffee a caramel a silver and a cream over that natural base. That's I like, like four more patterns for you guys because I got a little. This one's a cup of coffee in a skein. Right? Oh my gosh. I wish I could show you guys the picture. Susan sent us the appropriate <laughs> color of coffee over the weekend, which you put way too much cream in your coffee, uh, by the way. No. <laughs> Karen agreed with me. I have a um, never-ending battle with like ordering it the correct way at Starbucks because depending on the location, uh -oh. the light splash is correct and other locations, the regular splash of milk is correct. And I'm like, shouldn't it be a specific measurement? I think like, it's literally the, they, the cup or four. The splash would just be a hand tip in, right? I mean, I, mean, I don't no, know. If... Apparently not, because some locations, the light splash, my coffee is the same color as other locations at a regular splash. Okay, time to ask people that work at both of them, what's why? the difference? Yeah, why? why? Because the new one by my house, I have to order a regular splash, but at the one oh. on Bond that yeah. was my always one until they built one right by my house, um, that one's a light splash to get essentially the exact same coffee. That's bizarre. It makes no sense. Okay, Starbucks, fess up. What's going on? Like, I thought those little lines on the cup were like 
recommendations for a apparently. Reason, like, you know, you fill it this much with this and then this much with that based on what mm -hmm. customers order. I'm about ready to be like, is there like can, a way I can say put milk in until the cup is, you know, a half inch deep and then fill it the rest of the way with coffee? Because I just need just enough to knock down the acidity on my coffee. That's it. No more. You could do your own splash. Bring it with you, you can. That's why you buy the super cute little, those little cups that are, they're about this tall. Sometimes yeah. you find them. I'll let you know next time I see one. Okay, because I'm like, I don't know. And then you just bring your milk with you and add it yourself. That sounds like too much work. I know, but I have some a friend, crazy friend who does that. Are they also one of those people who orders it at a specific temperature? No. That's so cute. Isn't it cute? I had to start with this picture to show you guys because in the first pictures, these adorable pants are very distracting. Oh my. Are those knit pants? Yes. Okay. With ruffles. That's funny. But they're very distracting. And the top is super cute. These ones are not knit. These ones are fabric. Yeah. But the top has this super cute little kind of peplum right here and then seed stitch in a contrast color on the bottom there's an option for doing it with a hood you can put a bow in the back oh, cute. or a button depending on which method you feel like is easiest super cute little top and cotton's great for little kids because they can't exactly tell you whether they're fiber sensitive yet so if you just use a soft cotton i don't think i've ever heard of anybody allergic to cotton mm -mm. look the pants are in the picture is that part of the pattern i have a feeling it's one of their other patterns but let's see what they say because the top has sizes zero to three months to four to six years oh no it's a separate pattern okay with ruffle pants okay Ooh, look at the ruffle dress oh how cute i don't feel like sharon made something similar to that oh no it was the pants the little the yeah those the soakers yeah yeah i'm like you just it was more of ruffles, a skirt but ruffles that's all the cute. Way. And that's also worsted, so you could do the ruffle dress with this yarn too. But either way, adorableness. So if you need to knit cute baby stuff, apparent to like six-year-old size stuff, apparently go check out Claire Gentry because she has some really cute stuff. Then you guys may remember I mentioned that washcloths slash dishcloths would be really good out of this yarn. That's fun. This is the Legato dishcloth, which has this really fun kind of optical illusion stitch pattern that will not let me zoom. Yes, that's as zoomed as I get. But it's just slip stitches. Like you're doing two colors, but you've got some slip stitches in there that allow these little blocks to form. On the back, it's very trippy looking too. Wow. So nothing too complicated in the stitch pattern itself. It's, it says 246 yards, but um, based on other washcloth patterns, I'm gonna say one skein each of your two colors is plenty. Because I could get a washcloth out of one ball. Yeah. Maybe it's based on what they used. Yeah, I think it's That's just, a lot of I yardage. think they just totaled the yardage of the two colors, like the full ball. Yeah. Then we have the almost lost washcloth. I've made so many of those. This is, if you've never done short rows and short rows scare you, do this washcloth because it's a washcloth. So if it's not perfect, the world's not going to end. And by the end of it, you will not be afraid of short rows because that's really all it is. Mm -hmm. It's garter stitch and short rows. Little wedges. Cute little wedges until you have a circle. And they just say one size on the pattern. But again, this is going to be a, like if we go look at people's projects. 
people are getting it out of, I mean, look, this person said 23 yards. So you could get a couple per skein, depending on your gauge. This one said 95, so that's one skein, but they made two. So that's why I'm like, on that other one, I'm like, just get one skein each of your two colors and mm -hmm. go for it. Because 43 yards, like one skein, probably getting two washcloths out of it. All right, one more project. The Sand Shore Cardigan. This is super cute and perfect for summer because look at all of this lace. You've got mesh lace down the back. You've got it across here. For me, I would move it up right? a little bit because it feels like it should be at the waistline and it, to me it's too low on her. Yeah. Like it's right at her high hip instead of at her waist. And all that is is figuring out your measurements to know when to do that section, and we can help you with knowing what to measure. But in cotton, it's going to be lightweight and swingy. Cute. You could put a little button right here if you want it to stay closed. But it has a size range of 31 to 67. And it's knit at a really loose gauge, size nine and ten and a half needles for a gauge of 16 stitches. Hello, fast cardigan. Perfect for summer. Like that's the kind you wear just to keep the air conditioning off of you. Oh yes, Claudia, you could totally just leave the mesh lace off of the back if you wanted. What I would recommend yeah. if you do that is get one extra ball because lace uses less yarn than stockinette. So even though it seems like it should be about the same, get an extra ball. Trust me, it will be worth it. Yes. And with your leftover, you make a washcloth. Because I did a cardigan once that was supposed to have like that whole center panel down the back was garter stitch. And I knew I was right on the money for the yardage, so I left that panel out, and it's a good thing I did. Oh, I ended geez. up ripping out my swatch to do, like, just this little, like, half-inch cuff wow. on one sleeve. That's how Wow. Close. So if I'd have done the garter stitch, I'd have been in big trouble. Like, it would have been a three-quarter sleeve or something at that point, because oopsie. See, swatching is good. It gives you an emergency backup. Yes. I needed that emergency backup too. Okay, let us go talk about some upcoming classes because we have lots of good stuff. I'll link the calendar for you guys. And I will put it all in the collective and then post the video to YouTube as well. So if you have folks that are not on Facebook but they do YouTube, let them know. So coming up on Tuesday next week is the Cobalt Comet Cowl class. I'm excited for this one. We've had lots of people signing up and getting the yarn for it. This one, we're going to teach you how to do a garter tab at the beginning, this little spot right here, and then how to work the shaping of the cowl to increase out into that bandana shape, as well as when and how to work the lace design with your pooling color. So this is one of those where you wanna get one of those assigned pooling colorways so that you can do this fun little technique every time you come to the color splash. And then in the second session, we'll teach you guys how to switch from working flat to in the round, the mesh lace border, binding off nice and loose, and voila, you're good to go. Then on Friday, April 14th, we have the Floor to Jade Cowl. This one is for those who want a quick knit or just want to learn a technique right quick with a bulky weight yarn. We used the Malabriga Noventa. This is the one skein size. And in class, we'll teach you how to do this fun left and right twist pattern that creates these little branches against that garter ridge background. Then on Saturday, April 14th, we'll kick off the Cumulus Scoop Neck Tea class. In this one, you're going to learn lots of the basic techniques to making a garment. And again, no sleeves required. 
So there's a split hem, there's some waist shaping, there's a little bit of short rows to create that scoop neck, and we will teach you all of that in class. There is homework between each class, so we have given you plenty of time between each session. Like between session one and two has the most knitting to do, so we gave you three weeks, and then two weeks between session two and three. Then on Tuesday, April 18th, we have the Instant Gratification Scarf Class for a whole $5. This is one of those one skein wonder projects where we'll teach you how to do the I-cord edging, the increasing, knowing how many rows you've done since your last increase, some decreasing, and voila. Again, easy, fun, fast knitting. And then last but not least requires wandering over to the table with all of the beautiful Dream and Color Trunk Show is we have Karen's Foremost Shawl. This is done out of one skein of a worsted weight yarn, 220 yards. You could get three balls of the cotton and do a summer one. Ooh, that'd be fun. And this is a really easy pattern to keep going. So like three skeins gives you a little extra yardage. You could do an additional repeat of this stockinette garter stripe pattern and make it just a little bit bigger. And in class, we'll teach you to do the shaping and the pattern repeat. And that one is Friday, April 21st. Claudia, I don't blame you. The Sophie scarf is a very satisfying one to knit and I can tell how much people love it because there's really not a yarn that I've looked at on Ravelry in digging into projects that doesn't have a Sophie scarf knit out of it. So I was searching the other day and I'm like, oh my God, there it is. Like, I feel like if you go in projects in the Sophie scarf, every yarn is in there. Pretty much. Almost every yarn. Maybe not this one because it's so new. Like this one is so new, it's not on Ravelry. So somebody do one and then post it on Ravelry and we'll have well, that one covered. We gotta get Katya to put the yarn on Ravelry because the yarn's not Ew, there. well, all right, there is that, but still. But still, somebody knit a Sophie scarf out of it. Yes. I still think I'm gonna do that woolly cute one. That one's cute. For multiple reasons, including the fact the that name. the name is, <laughs> is woolly cute. Uh-huh. Because uh -huh, I love stuff like that, like puns for the win. Okay, so I think we better talk about what we're wearing and then pop off to pull orders and open the boutique. So I am wearing my Riberia Grande top. It is a really fun pattern where you get to go sideways for this part and then pick up stitches and knit down for the body. You can do it in the round or if you do it on the machine, you're gonna do a front and a back separately and then seam it which you can also do by hand if you would prefer because seams do give you more structure in your garments than not having seams. And it does have a little split hem because once I did it on one garment, I'm like, okay, I'm hooked now. This is, <laughs> this is the way to go because none of my sweaters ride up anymore. Oh, nice. Like, well, I shouldn't say none. None of my ones with a split hem ride yes. up. All of my old ones still do scoochy things, which are not they're annoying all day you go like this <laughs> i wish i'd started doing the split him sooner live and learn join the split him party we have fun claudia yes this yarn would work for a sophie scarf just absolutely the needle size accordingly like i'd probably do size nines with this yarn yeah maybe do two balls increase till you're almost out of the first one decrease done. until you're done voila and then there's Shushin. This one is the Out of Line Cowl from Dream and Colors Plan Pooling. This is our exclusive abalone colorway. With Very little charcoal fun. splashes. Very fun knit. And if you forget that you're supposed to switch on that one, oh well. Yeah, it's fine. Nobody will know. And sometimes you do it on purpose just to keep stuff from stacking as yeah. much. It won't matter as much on this design because you're just doing a purl or a knit, whatever's opposite of the row you're on. But on ones like the lace ones or like 
tangerine. Really like. Yeah. <laughs> that one, it matters. You just kind of knit past it a few times and then it won't stack. So sometimes you have to adjust and skip one or skip half of one or whatever. Just make it whatever work. Make, whatever makes you happy, really. The whole thing with the assigned poolings is that it's a little bit of an opportunity to play around with your yarn and not have such a structured pattern without it being totally freestyled where you're like, yeah, but I need a little bit of instruction yeah. or I don't know what I'm doing. It's a little bit freeform, but yeah. you have something to follow. So. It's freeform-ish. Yeah. Okay, maybe that name's not taken for a pattern. Ooh, yeah. Better that write that bad. down. Right? I'm like, <laughs> We're going to say later, what was it? Ish. Okay. All right, you guys. I think that's going to be it. We'll sign off, pull your orders, get ready to open the boutique, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day. Bye.